Welcome back. I've missed you. Now, everybody always wants to get better faster. But wouldn't it be nice to know how long it takes to go from not good to good? All of this is subjective. So one might feel good at a certain level, whereas like another artist might feel not good at the same level. But there's still a way to find out roughly how long it would take for you and what you did get there. In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll go through my art from day one as a kid until now, basically, from complete beginner to, you know, professional artist with over 30 years of experience drawing. This way, it might just give you an idea of where you stand now in comparison and how long it took me to get to the points that you consider good. If, of course, I ever reach that point in your eye. Obviously, I'm not you and everybody's different. But if I was watching this video when I was younger, I would have gotten something out of it. So that's the whole reason why I'm putting this out there. So hopefully it should give you some idea of how long it takes to get good at art in like a more visual way. But I'll also go over how long it actually takes, like in terms of months slash years later in a video, because it's a question that keeps coming back. And I wish I knew that too when I was younger. So I'm going to let this play in the background. It's a good chunk of the art that I was able to save from childhood to adulthood in a chronological order. Because meanwhile, I'll share the three most impactful things that I did to go from zero to pro, which is basically when I started to consider myself good. Looking back, like, I don't think I had anything really to feel that good about. But in the moment, I remember crossing over from the point where it felt like everything I did was kind of garbage or just like partially decent to finally being like happy with my work. Even though it was something like 20 years ago, it was such a pivotal moment as an artist that I remember it very clearly. So even though that same moment will happen at a different time for everyone, looking back, there are still some clear steps that I took to make it happen. I started to live off my art alone at 17, so relatively early. So here's what I did to go from poorly copying anime still frames at like 13, 14 years old to working as a professional just three short years later. The idea of the video is that maybe if you do something similar, you'll have similar results. So let's get into it. One of the most important realizations that I had, I think I must have been in my early teens, was to understand that getting good at art is a marathon. My own experiences made that so obvious. I had a lot of rivals along the way, and all of them completely unaware that I was competing with them though. But yeah, a one-sided rivalry with friends or classmates that I considered better than me at some point. And without exception, I passed each one of them skill-wise. Each time I would feel like they were ahead, like way ahead. But then a few short years would pass and I'd look around and they wouldn't be drawing anymore or barely. So I would kind of just win the race by default by just continuing to draw and slowly but surely gaining experience. It just kept happening. And each time my determination kept getting stronger. It seems so obvious in art. If you can outlast others, you'll get ahead always. And more importantly, most people quit. The other thing that I attribute to my steady art game was the fact that I copied so much in my formative years. As a teacher now, I see way too many students just drawing from imagination and wondering why the heck they're not getting any better over time. And I talked about this in a recent video because of how important it is, but tracing initially and then copying other artists, you know, once tracing felt too easy was my whole strategy back then. My logic was that if I can draw the same drawings as those crazy good artists, then I might learn some things from them in the process. I wasn't big on real life references when I was younger, but looking back, drawing from reference was basically everything I did for a couple of years until my own original art started to feel like a, a level that seemed comparable, at least in my uneducated, inexperienced eyes back then. The tools we use will also make a big difference in how well we can copy. So I'm offering my custom brush set for free with the link in the video description. And I've used every single one of those brushes multiple times for the art that you've seen in the background. They're great. Now, everything that I've talked about so far is impossible without the third principle. You won't copy consistently if you don't have drive. What is it that drives you? My goal, my drive as an artist before money was even something that I considered was to get better than others, to get to a point where their skills didn't intimidate me anymore. Growing up, I always had artists that I was following on DeviantArt, you know, back in the days when it was actually a good place for artists. And my competitiveness is what drove me for years to get better and better. I think feeling inferior as an artist, like inferior in that one skill that I had invested so much time into, the one skill that kind of defined my personality was such an uncomfortable position to be in for me. It's what motivated me to keep going on and on and on without stopping. In the back of my mind, there was always this voice that said, if they did it, why can't I? Now everybody's gonna have a different drive, 
but it's important to find it and be conscious of it. When I didn't feel like drawing, I would imagine all those other artists that I wanted to catch up to, like practicing furiously, and each time I'd get this nagging feeling that I was falling behind, which would, of course, push me back to my tablet to get drawing again. So being aware of that drive, whatever it is for you, and reminding you of it often is critically important, I think. So to be consistent, to copy, and to have a clear drive, those are the things that I followed as a young artist. But there's one more thing I wish I had access to when I was younger because I'm sure my growth would have been significantly faster if I had structure. Structure to my studies. Back in my days, there were no accessible art mentors, no social media, no YouTube or anything like that. I'm old, you know? So I had to discover all of that on my own through trial and error. So when I started teaching about like 10 years ago, it became my new goal to offer students from everywhere on the planet an affordable way to get that structure that I had been missing in my earlier years provide the same level of education as a traditional art university, but dramatically beat them at the price and offer an education for just a fraction of the cost. And that's why I spent over two years of full-time work to put together my art program that you all probably know about by now. Basically everything I wish that I had back then. A complete art education where I take your hand through all the content. And I'm mentioning this because exactly five years ago this month marks the date that I completed the program. So you'll be able to get it on sale at a huge discount until the end of the month to celebrate. But of course, since then, I've continuously been updating it and adding to it. And students always get the updates for free. I obviously highly recommend it. And it's perfect for you if you're an artist that's just kind of starting. But also definitely if you have some experience already. It's the project that I'm most proud of in my life so far. So I think you'll like it. Check it out with the link down in the description. And now I want to end with what I promised at the start of the video. To answer the question of how long it takes to get good at art exactly. So you might have an idea now seeing where I was in my own development and how long after that it took for me to get good, at least what you consider good. But again, that was without a clear structure. So I'm certain it could have happened faster if I had access to something like my art program back then. Getting to a point you consider good at art can take very long if you have no idea what you're doing. But if you know what to work on and if you have good structure to your practice and you keep doing those things consistently, based on my experience and what I've observed with the hundreds of students that I've mentored over the years, generally speaking, the average transition from not good to good takes about two years for students on my art program. And it's not a perfect science, of course. It's only near perfect. But I'm basing this on whether or not you're at a level where you could make money consistently or not. So in two years on average, my students would go from being nowhere near to be able to charge money for their art to two years later being good enough to work as professional artists in some capacity. And now, obviously, for everyone out there who doesn't really care about charging money for their art or to get to that professional level, it might just take you even less time to get to a level just below, but a really good level nonetheless. So great news. So if this helps, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you next week.